So today I want to discuss a phenomenon that really affects students but can be experienced by anyone and it is called imposter syndrome. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new, my name is Julia and I am a third year medical student. So in psychology, imposter syndrome is defined as a psychological pattern in which one doubts one's own accomplishments and has a persistent internalized fear of being exposed as a fraud. Despite external evidence of one's own competence, those experiencing this phenomenon remain convinced that they are frauds and that they do not deserve everything that they have achieved. Ridiculous, right? But it happens. Individuals incorrectly attribute their success to luck or convince themselves that they've tricked other people into thinking that they are more intelligent than they are. Imposter syndrome affects everyone. The reason why I wanted to talk about imposter syndrome here today is because it is something that I've experienced by talking to my friends and peers and colleagues. It's something actually a lot of people have experienced, but for me personally, it was something that I didn't know how to name. This is a psychology staple. It's something that's discussed in psychology a lot. So I think I became aware of it when I was studying for the MCAT. However, it's something that we've talked a lot in med school about. So I just want to offer up a little bit of advice from experience and strategies that can help you combat imposter syndrome. Because for some, it's inevitable, especially in this career path, in this field, pre-meds, medical school. This is a very high stress, competitive field and imposter syndrome is rampant. It's just something that not everyone discusses. So let's discuss it. So throughout college at Penn State, I didn't really experience imposter syndrome, or if I did, I can't put my finger on it now that I knew what it was or that I really struggled with it. Of course, I had my fair share of challenging experiences and failed tests, but for me, I could always identify where I needed to improve, where I should have studied more, where I should have skipped that party on Saturday night. So there was always something in which I can identify that would have allowed me to do better. So I never had any doubts necessarily that I was competent or that I was smart enough because I was always performing well. And I never really got too competitive into sports and things like that because that is another area in which people can experience imposter syndrome. But I never played sports competitively or was in any other situation in which I felt as though I was a fraud or incompetent. So it was mostly academics for me. So undergrad came and went, grad school came and went, and then medical school comes. Woo, um, yeah. It's just a completely different ball game. It's just something you cannot prepare for until you are here and you're living it and trying to make it through. I remember being in orientation for medical school. We had a week of orientation before we started classes and the my Dean of Student Affairs would make the analogy that med school was like eating a stack of pancakes and pancakes just com keep coming and you're eating at first and you're managing but eventually there's just too many pancakes and you're your mouth is getting stuffed and all of that. And at first I was like, I love pancakes. I don't know what he's talking about. I can eat as many pancakes as I want, bring it on. But then you start to realize very quickly that med school is just a completely, it's the major leagues, major, major leagues. It's something that I just was not prepared for. And so the pancakes became overwhelming for me. Very quickly into my medical school experience, about three, no, it was probably about the first test. So the first two to three weeks of medical school, I was immediately overwhelmed. Don't get me wrong, I was excited to be here and I was like embracing the, the workload and ooh, at least I'm here, but you don't really get the full picture of what goes on in medical school and how much work it is until you start taking tests and the rhythm starts to pick up. So in the beginning, you're just like getting by. So it wasn't until that first test didn't do well. I passed, but barely. Um, and then the work kept coming. The day after the test, four new lectures. The day after, four new lectures. So it was like, whoa, they're not slowing down. You know, like this isn't like undergrad where 
it's like you're learning one thing you're in one class all semester you know this was like you're juggling 40 lectures in a week and it's like overwhelming so being overwhelmed doesn't play out well with performance because I couldn't manage everything therefore I wasn't performing well so the next test comes I do just as poorly the next test comes I maybe do a little bit better but I wasn't getting my footing where imposter syndrome kicked in for me in medical school was after every test you get your score but you also get the class average so my scores were repeatedly in the 70s like high 70s and the class average would be high 80s or low 90s and that's where i started to feel as though i don't belong here as though i was a fraud and i started to question how i got accepted into medical school and who permitted me to be here because clearly i am not performing at the level of the other people you chose. So there's a disconnect. I don't belong. I'm the outlier. And that is imposter syndrome. That is the definition of it. It was psychologically convincing myself that I didn't deserve my success of making it to medical school, that I tricked everyone into thinking I was intelligent and I started to believe it myself. The problem was that I was trying and after every test I would try harder the next time to do better but it wasn't paying off I wasn't seeing the hard work pay off and because of that I really started to question my own intelligence because if everybody else could be succeeding and obviously performing at a much higher standard than I can and I'm working at my optimal effort level then how come it's not working for me it must be something wrong with me so during the first few months when people would ask me oh how's medical school going i simply just didn't know how to respond i would give very generic answers like oh it's tough but i'm surviving i'm here but what i really wanted to say was i do not know how i got here i don't belong i was consistently scoring below the class average on all of my exams despite giving it all of my effort and this was just a foreign concept to me I did not struggle in this way in undergrad. So for me, I felt like a fraud, as if I was a person taking up a seat in a medical school class that was supposed to be for another individual that was much more deserving and much more intelligent than I was. What I had to continuously remind myself, and thankfully I had a lot of great mentors who also reminded me this, there is definitely a strategy to being academically successful in medical school and it takes some much longer than others to get those strategies down yes medical school is difficult and i knew that coming in but what i failed to realize is that along with the academic learning curve you must also learn how to retain your self-confidence in this environment an environment in which you are among some of the most intelligent and gifted individuals in the nation Medical school average isn't regular average. And that was something I just didn't realize. But when you're here, it just doesn't always click like that. It's just really hard not to compare yourself when you see other people who cannot even study or study half the amount of time as I do and score 15 points higher on an exam than I would. What also contributed to my imposter syndrome was that I check a lot of the boxes for marginalized populations i'm a woman in a male dominated field of course it's getting much better these days but still there is that bias there i'm a minority a black woman i'm also a first generation college student so all of these things are running through my mind and making it even worse because i'm thinking other people are thinking about those things about me too you know people already question a lot of those groups that i just listed and whether or not they deserve their seats in medical school classes or if affirmative action got them there or if the class needed more diversity so those are thoughts that are definitely pervasive in the medical school community and i won't deny that so that of course was ringing through my mind and making my imposter syndrome even more real because I had a lot of those characteristics that are already questioned and already 
makes people question the competency or intelligence of individuals on top of not performing well and it was just a recipe for disaster giving up is never an option because that's just not the type of person i am however these feelings of imposter syndrome definitely take their toll emotionally and mentally it took me months to break out of this form of thinking and thankfully i had a lot of great mentors and peers who not only have experienced imposter syndrome, but have overcome it. And thankfully I had them to help me along the way. But it wasn't easy and it still isn't easy to this day. I still have little moments in which I get in my head and question my own intelligence or whether or not I belong, but it all comes back to knowing who you are, being confident in yourself and your knowledge and your skill and being unapologetically yourself. One strategy that I have found extremely helpful for myself is that I vowed to myself that I would only compare me to me. I'm competing against nobody but myself. And it just took me a, a while to realize that, but I'm my own competition, or that's at least how it should be. Am I progressing from the last test? Am I progressing from yesterday or the day before? And that should be the measuring stick, not me versus the next person who's doing something completely different and who's come from a completely different background than I have. We're, we're comparing apples and oranges. Once I adopted this way of thinking and continuously revamped my study strategies, I started to see improvement. That gave me the little boost I needed and the little resilience to push through, but if not for that, imposter syndrome could have took me out. Imposter syndrome can drain you if you let it. And comparing yourself to others is not constructive whatsoever. It's completely self-sabotaging and destructive. No benefit comes out of that. So compare you to you. Run your own race. The truth of the matter is, imposter syndrome can affect everyone in some way. Whether it is an athlete who doesn't trust in their talent, an artist who questions their skill, or a pre-medical student who doubts their knowledge and intelligence. But you have to be aware of it. When you are experiencing imposter syndrome, especially now that hopefully you know what it is, you have to be aware of your own mind and the tricks that it can play on you. And more importantly, identify strategies that work for you to get yourself out of it. The problem is not experiencing imposter syndrome. It's the effects that you allow it to have on you. So we are all different and we all have different coping mechanisms, but whatever you find works for you to get yourself out of that hole of these feelings of being a fraud and imposter syndrome, stick with that. So for me, not only do I like to continuously remind myself to compare myself to only me, but I also like to just sit with myself and reflect on everything that I have achieved to this point. And it's not in a way in which to brag or to put myself up on a pedestal because I'm doing my own internal reflection. This isn't, I'm not bouncing this off of anyone else, but to just sit with myself and think about where I'm at and where I've come from and the journey that I've had to this point. And even if I have to go and look at my, you know, resume or just find some way to personally, not from other people, to personally find a sense of confidence in my own accolades, that helps me. It helps me get out of the funk of I don't belong, of I'm a fraud, and remind me of the fact that no, you're not. Look at everything you've done. Look at where you're at and how many people want to be where you're at. And that helps me put it all in perspective. So I hope that you can find strategies that work for you if you find yourself experiencing feelings of imposter syndrome and that can quickly and efficiently get you out of that funk so that you can get back to work and be productive. So just always remember that you are qualified you are deserving and you are worthy. Continue to give yourself these positive affirmations if you need to believe it. But just know, I believe in you, I'm here for you, and you are not alone. Until next time.